All right, this is going to be a quick look at uh, creating and editing a simple Boolean uh, cluster in Grobato. We'll also be looking at some key commands as we go along. You can see these key commands in Grobato at any time by pressing the question mark key to get this list. So in any case, we're going to start with the B key, which selects the Bool tool from the edit panel down there below. I'm right-clicking on the library and saying that I want to place an ellipsoid at world center. Because the Bool tool is active, it asks me if I want to create a new cluster at the same time that I drop, and indeed I do. So there it is, um, the start of a cluster, the initial object. I'm using the T key to cycle through tools. It uh, moves through the various tools down there at the bottom until I got to the reshape tool, and the R key cycles through the individual reshape options for this object type, an ellipsoid in this case. So I'm just reshaping this ellipsoid. Uh, going to go for sort of a 50s, 60s astronaut helmet here. Um, and this ellipsoid will be the starting point. Um, you can hold down the command key to rotate the camera at any time no matter what tool is selected. So I'm doing that there. I'm just doing a bit of rotation and uh, reshaping. I don't want a perfect sphere here. I want something a little bit uh, uh, asymmetric. So I'm playing with its dimensions a bit. But we'll see how that evolves as, as we go along. So uh, the next thing I want to do is cut out a faceplate for this helmet. And I'm going to use a cylinder for that. And I'm getting it from the Boolean trims section of the library. Again, right-clicking. And at this time, I'm choosing from the pop-up menu that I want to add it to the current cluster. And as you can see, it was added to the cluster. Takes effect immediately. Um, and it was added to the list of uh, Boolean objects over there in the uh, modeling tools panel in the Boolean tab. So I can uh, select that cylinder, um, and the notes that you see uh, on the screen will help you uh, see your various options for all these things as I go along. I'm just going to cover the basics with what I have to say here. But I've selected the cylinder, and now I am reshaping it. And again, I'm using keys to cycle through the tools. Um, I'm changing its length here. I changed its radius earlier. Uh, there's this special number 9 key, which can be used to do 90-degree rotations. Very handy. Uh, and I'm going to move it here in just a second, and to do that I will uh, use the constraint keys, uh, which are 1 through 6, which allow you to constrain motion uh, to an axis or a plane. In this case, I'm going to uh, constrain it to the YZ plane, meaning it won't move an X. That keeps it centered and symmetric, since we use left-right symmetry in Grobato. Um, and that's a pretty good carve-out for the faceplate of this helmet. And now I'm going to duplicate this main ellipsoid. I just duplicated it in place. And you notice that it was added to the cluster. I'm, uh, I'm uh, reshaping it here. And right now it's just another positive object, so you don't see much of an effect because it's being trimmed by that same cylinder as, uh, as our original ellipsoid. But I'm going to use it to hollow out the helmet by switching its role to outside body. So the only thing that remains of the original ellipsoid is now what is outside of this new ellipsoid. And you can see it's a, it's a hollow uh, ellipsoid now. And uh, you can play with that. I'm going to make the wall uh, of that uh, hollow ellipsoid a little bit thinner. So now we're starting to get somewhere. Um, I think the next thing I want to do is cut a neck hole for this thing. I'm going to use uh, the same technique of uh, getting a boolean trim from the library. This time it's a hyper rod um, set to outside caps and really we'll just be using uh, what's outside of uh, one cap, the top cap, and you'll see that in a moment as I start to move it and rotate it into place. Uh, the reason I wanted to use a hyper rod here is that it has that nice curved, I could have trimmed it with a with a plane for which we use a, the base of a cone but here I'm using a hyperox that has that domed cap, and I will use that uh, feature to uh, make its intersection with the helmet uh, a little more graceful and interesting. So again, same thing, using the keys, which are all noted in the little notes that pop up on the screen here, um, to switch tools and uh, reshape and rotate and position this uh, new trim object. And by the way, you can see that it was added to the list over there on the right in the modeling tools panel. So the currently selected uh, hyper rod outside caps. 
So going through the reshape tool options there, and I'm, you can see there I'm bulging out those caps a little bit. And then it'll make that bevel. It's subtle, but it makes that bevel at the bottom of the helmet uh, more, uh, more interesting, more appropriate. So now you really start to get the sense of this hollowed out shell. I'm selecting the um, main ellipsoid again just as a, as a point of reference so that when I place this next object, um, which is going to be a, uh, another ellipsoid, it will be centered on that selection. It's just a handy way of getting things lined up. And it comes in as a, when, it, when, you, when you get a regular object from the library, it comes in as an undefined Boolean type, which means it's not affected by trim objects. It's, ne it's neither a primary nor a trim. And that's nice because it means it's always going to be visible when you first bring it in and you can just play with it until you decide what you want its role to be. And that's what I'm about to do here. I'm switching it to another primary object. And you can see it there highlighted in that sort of gold color. It's very similar to the, uh, to the main ellipsoid, but slightly different in shape. And uh, my, my goal here is, moving it a little bit in the here now, uh, my goal here is to make that into a brim or rim around that uh, faceplate area. And then you can see that a little more clearly now. I've offset it. And it's uh, intersecting very subtly with the uh, main ellipsoid. I should have been had, I should have had these uh, outlines on to begin with so you could see it more clearly, but I uh, turned them on for you now. It's just one of our rendering modes. So now you can see the, the individual primitives and their intersections uh, quite clearly. Rotating around a bit so you can get a look at that. And that's the, that's the great advantage of working with true uh, analytical primitives. These are very subtle intersections and slight changes in the shape of that uh, new ellipsoid or its position. Uh, can create wonderfully subtle differences in uh, the resultant uh, intersected uh, form. So that's all I'm doing here now is just kind of moving it around and, and until I get uh, it positioned and uh, shaped and trimmed it just the way I want. Very nice little uh, rim or brim there. And now I'm, I just double clicked on the cluster to drop out of editing mode just so I can see it free of all the wireframes and such and, and, and get a good look at the form and decide what I want to do with it next. Uh, looking at it now, I see that it's uh, a little bit wider overall uh, proportionally than I would like. So I'm going to uh, double click again to go back to uh, making it an active editable cluster. And I'm going to select all the ellipsoids, um, the, the main one, the brim, and the one that trims the hollows out the inside and uh, just squeeze everything, make it look a little bit narrower left to right. And as, it, as is noted here, there are different ways of selecting and uh, in some cases it's easiest to select right on the screen. In other cases uh, it's helpful to have the list. Uh, so I did a little of each there and as you can see I'm now reshaping it, just narrowing everything. Just a little bit there and that, uh, that gave me a shape that I like a little bit better. And uh, now let's see what we want to do next. Um, I'm going to add some of those uh, classic kind of earmuffs, uh, uh, headphones, whatever they are, to the, uh, to the helmet. And for that, I'm going to use a hyper rod, uh, the, the uh, bar so-called barrel hyper rod here that uh, has the same size ends. It's in our library. It's just a standard object. And again, as I mentioned before, when you bring in a standard object, it comes in as undefined, as you see there in the list which again means that it will always be visible and uh, you can play with it for a while before you decide uh, what its role is going to be in your Boolean cluster. So I'm doing that here. I'm just getting it ready, uh, lengthening it, um, rotating it around using that 9 key, that 90 degree rotation key. Um, and now I'm changing its role. You'll notice this time I did it from the right-click context menu. Uh, it can also be done from the list. You can change roles in a couple of different ways there. And you see its wireframe is, is highlit, sort of orange. And uh, now that it has a role as a primary, it's being clipped by the same objects that clip the inside of the helmet and the uh, faceplate area. And now let's take a quick uh, peek at the mesh. These are just default settings, so I'm not sure what we'll get here. Um, a, a little bit on the coarse side, but uh, that's okay. It can be tweaked uh, to whatever you want. And just spin it around a bit here. Oh, and. Uh, should, uh, should have done this earlier as well, turn on the lock lights to camera, which is a good set, uh, setup for uh, modeling. It means that as you rotate around, you'll never be on the dark side of the object. 
But the real uh, power and joy of this is that uh, because of the analytic primitives, you are free to change morphology and topology. I've made dozens of versions of this helmet. Uh, the mesh is always generated automatically, so it's a uh, stress-free creativity.